Our question is, what ignorance is? <laughs> what ignorance is? So under that, we have discussed uh, up to mental formation aggregate. So uh, now we have come to the point uh, ignorance of consciousness aggregate. But consciousness is something very subtle and uh, uh, the things we talk under consciousness aggregate is not that much easy to understand as normal conventional way. But Buddha has talked a lot about normal mind. Consciousness also mind. but. <coughs> Uh, things we are going to talk about consciousness aggregate here is a uh, bit subtle. Before to go to subtle area, I like to read some parts how Buddha generally talk about the mind. <coughs> Actually, when we say mind, it is not just, not only consciousness aggregate. When we say mind, it is feeling aggregate, perception aggregate, mental formation aggregate and consciousness aggregate. <coughs> All four, we take at one, one thing, we take as one thing when we talk about mind. Now anybody asks you, <coughs> what is mind? There's very easy answer. If somebody asks, uh, what is mind? How are you going to answer this question? Yes, mind is feeling, perception, mental formation and consciousness. Beyond that, there is no mind. Mind means only these four. Other than these, there is no anything called mind. Anything to count under mind. So, <clears throat> uh, Buddha talk in a very simple way, uh, what mind is, here in this chapter in Dhammapada. You know, there is a book called Dhammapada. It is very famous among Buddhists. Have you heard that book, Dhammapada? Yes. It's a part of Kuddhaka Nikaya. Kuddhaka Nikaya has 15 books. So one of them is Dhammapada. <coughs> Do you know what, the, what are the books in Kuddhaka Nikaya, under Kuddhaka Nikaya? <coughs> what are the books under Kuddhaka Nikaya? These are very basic knowledge about Buddhism. Yes. Yes. Siddhi Buddha Kaudana. Dhammapada. Teragata. Terigata. Jataka. Udana. Yuga. Come on. Petavattu. Vimana Vattu, Buddha Vansa, Charya Pitaka, Patisambhidamaka, another one. It's Niddesa. Niddesa. So there are 15. Another one you did not mention, I think. Kuddaka part. Kuddaka. Yes, yes. Kuddaka part is the first book of Kuddaka. Kuddaka. Uh, it is available in this part, part. question and answers. Uh, this is uh, Kumara Panya or Shopaka's question and answers. So this is in this part. So it is Uddaka part, Udana, Iti Uttaka, Dhammapada, uh, Suttanipata, Vimanavattu, Petavattu, Teragata, Terigata, Jataka, Niddesa, Pakisambhidamagga, Apadana, Buddha, and Charya. These are the 15 books under Kuddhaka Nikaya. So, this is from that Nikaya, that book. <coughs> now, these stanzas you have already heard, I think. Mind is the forerunner of all states. Mind is chief. Mind made are they. If one speaks or acts with wicked mind, because of that, 
suffering follows one even as the wheel follows the hoof of the drought ox. <coughs> Have you heard this sense? Yeah. Huh? Drought, yes, drought ox. <clears throat> Mind is the forerunner <clears throat> of all states. Mind is chief. Mind made are they. If one speaks or acts with pure mind, because of that, happiness follows one, even as one's shadow that never leaves. The flickering, fickle mind, difficult to guard, difficult to control, the wise person straightens it as a Fletcher straightens an arrow. Like a fish that is drawn from its watery abode and thrown upon land, even so does this mind flutter. Hence, should the realm of the passions be shunned. The mind is hard to check, swift, flits, wherever it lists, lists, I don't know that word, lists, to Fleet. control, huh? L-I-S-T-E-T-H, wherever it lists, <laughs> I don't know, to control it is good, a controlled mind is conducive to happiness. The mind is very hard to pursue. <coughs> extremely subtle, flits wherever it leads, leads, let the wise person guard it, a guarded mind is conducive to happiness. It's a mold form. Uh, paring far, wandering alone, bodiless, lying in a cave, is the mind. Those who subdue it are freed from the bond of Mara. He who ma he whose mind is not steadfast, he who knows not the true doctrine, he whose confidence wavers, the wisdom of such a one will never be perfect. He whose mind is not soaked by lust, he who is not affected by hatred, he who has transcended both good and evil, for such a vigilant one, there is no fear. Realizing that this body is as fragile as a jar, establishing this mind as firm as a fortified city, he should attack Mara with the weapon of wisdom. He should guard his conquest and be without attachment. Before long, alas, this body will lie upon the ground, cast aside, devoid of consciousness even as a useless charged log. <coughs> Whatever harm a foe may do to a foe, or a hater to a hater, an ill-directed mind can do one far greater harm. <clears throat> Whatever neither mother nor father nor any other relative can do, a well-directed mind does and thereby elevates one. Yes, these are the uh, exp uh, how to say, these are the explanations <coughs> about mind 
available in uh, Dhammapada in this chapter. This chapter is called Chittavag or the chapter uh, about mind. So this is the general explanation of, about mind. <coughs> Here mind means feeling, perception, mental formation and consciousness. But now we are going to give priority to consciousness or the consciousness aggregate. Now you know consciousness, when we call consciousness aggregate, it is past mind, future mind, present mind, gross mind, subtle mind, superior mind, inferior mind, mind inner or mind out, how say outer mind, inner mind and far mind and near mind. So when multiply by this level, this level, we call it consciousness aggregate. <coughs> and actually I should say uh, past consciousness, future consciousness, present consciousness, superior consciousness, inferior consciousness, gross consciousness, subtle consciousness, inner consciousness, outer consciousness, near consciousness, far consciousness, yes. So then it becomes consciousness aggregate. And when we add the craving into it, we call it consciousness aggregate subject to clinging. That clinging is not something outside consciousness. It's also within the consciousness, within the sub, within the five aggregate. Now we say five aggregate and five aggregate subject to clinging. That clinging is not the, not another sixth aggregate, but it is a part of five aggregate. So when we look at the consciousness, we find uh, <coughs> three, mainly three. Uh, how say? There are different ways of classifying consciousness. One way, even yesterday we read that part, we can, uh, we can um, classify consciousness into four mainly. One, two, three, four. These are sensual sphere consciousness. Sensual sphere consciousness. Find <coughs> sphere consciousness. Uh, immaterial sphere consciousness. Supramantic. from mundane consciousness. Okay, this is one way of classifying the consciousness. And now for the moment, uh, I'm going to start from another classification. Uh, I'll come to this classification later uh, because uh, what I'm going to tell you is more uh, kind of more applicable. Consciousness can be divided mainly into three. Uh, karmic consciousness. Consciousness. Resultant consciousness. Functional consciousness. So, this is this is another way of understanding consciousness. Karmic consciousness means all our volitional actions, karma. There are two volitional actions. What are these two? Huh? Wholesome and unwholesome. That's right. Wholesome and unwholesome. Wholesome consciousness and unwholesome consciousness. 
and resultant consciousness also and resultant consciousness means consciousness arise because of karmas because of past karmas if we perform uh, unwholesome karma uh, we get unwholesome result resultant minds unwholesome resultant consciousness if we do wholesome karma we get wholesome resultant minds so uh, that's the meaning of resultant consciousness come and result and next part is functional consciousness functional consciousness means it doesn't give any fruit any result it's neither a result nor a karma and it doesn't give results also such kind of consciousness we call functional consciousness okay, functions without even yes these consciousness available in arahants <laughs> yes so under under these functional consciousness there are all together 20 out of this 20 uh, 18 are available within arahants only but two consciousness available in all the beings even we have these two consciousness they are called uh, in pali we call mano dwara vajjana chitta that means adverting mind do consciousness and other one is pancha dwara vajjana chitta adverting five sense do consciousness that means this bhavanga chitta yesterday we discuss a little bit about this bhavanga chitta is the uh, life continuing continuing mind so life continuing mind should turn or stop and turn the mind into the uh, objects coming into the sense doors that turning action is neither wholesome no unwholesome that mind is a functional mind so it is available in everybody to and there is another such a mind that bhavanga process should stop and turn into the mind object where uh, the ter- yes turn into the mind object that turning action also a function it doesn't give any any result it's neither wholesome nor unwholesome that is the mind adverting consciousness these two consciousness are not wholesome and not unwholesome and these two available in everybody everybody means not only human humans animals devas everybody and these 18 minds are available only in arahants and now as example when a normal person practice jhana so absorptions they are wholesome and they can give wholesome results but when arahants practice in jhanas they are not giving results that's why we call it functional minds and when we say wholesome what do you mean by that word what's the meaning of the word wholesome <coughs> it's good to understand it what is the meaning of wholesome many english speaking should many english speaking people should know this yes what is the wholesome hello god do sir these are wholesome roots my question is what's the meaning of wholesome healthy roots ah that's right healthy healthiness mental health is called wholesome health mental health Huh? Yeah. Who is mentally healthy? Uh, mentally health sa arahants. Yes. 
Could you think of uh, alternately beneficial? Benefits. Ah, this is the ne this is the ne next meaning. First meaning is health, mental health. Second meaning is how say giving happy results or giving benefits. Benefits to you and others. Benefits to you and others. This is yes, can be. Benefits to you and others. Yes. So this is the second meaning of the wholesome, mm, beneficial. So giving, can you also say pleasant results? Like yes, giving good. pleasant results. That's the that's the real meaning actually. Giving pleasant results. Right that way. Giving pleasant result. That is the meaning of wholesome. Giving pleasant result, and there's another one. Uh, wholesome means uh, talented. Oh. No, uh, wholesome in the kusala means kusala. Mm -hmm. Kosala, kosala sambhutatte, kosala, kausalle. In, in, in Sanskrit, kausalle. Mm -hmm. Translated as skillful. Ah, skillful. Yes, skillful. Yes, that's right. Kausala means skillful. 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 Skillful is the third meaning. And there's another meaning. Uh, I can't remember. So, mainly, these three meanings are the meaning of the word wholesome. You can find this explanation in Atta Salin. That is the first commentary to the Abhidhamma Pitaka. There are three commentaries to Abhidhamma Pitaka. First one is Atta Salini. Second one is Samoha Vinodani. Third one is Pancha Pakarana Attakata. So the first commentary gives three, the, actually there is another one, four meanings to the word also. So these are the uh, uh, me, these are the meanings. So through this you can understand the meaning of unwholesome also. Opposite of this. So what is the meaning of unwholesome? Mentally not health. Greed, aversion, delusion, these are not healthy states of mind. So mentally not unhealthy this is the unwholesome. And what is the opposite of this one? Un giving, unpleasant. giving unpleasant result is the meaning of unwholesome. And uh, what is the opposite of this one? Not, not skillful. Un un Unskill unskillness, unskillfulness is the meaning of unwholesome. So, uh, listen about this pleasant result. It could be only then in Arahat. We enjoy it. We have pleasant feelings in a lot of un unwholesome and malicious uh, activities. So we are not indeed because uh, otherwise we would be not. Now, now the problem is this pleasantness is available in wholesome minds as well as unwholesome and minds. That's what I mean. And uh, even in resultant minds, pleasantness is available. Pleasant means uh, maybe beneficial, maybe pleasant. Um, maybe we don't have to anyway, wholesomeness can give you better result or the happy result, pleasant result, beneficial result. That's why it is called wholesome. Uh, you can get better results, beneficial uh, or useful results in next life source. That's why it is wholesome. In throughout the sun's future sansara, that's why it's called wholesome. And uh, uh, even the prussians, supramundane prussians you can get because of the wholesomeness. That's why it's called wholesome. So wholesome is something give us Mm, benefits, happiness, comfort, pleasure, 
all these things. That's the yes, that's the meaning of course. And uh, through that, easily you can understand what is unwholesome. So, these uh, karmic consciousness we can divide into two wholesome and unwholesome. And result. The certain minds also we can uh, divide into same way. And functional minds we can't divide anyway. So this is one way of understanding consciousness. And uh, according to Abhidhamma, there are uh, uh, 12 unwholesome minds and there are uh, 21 wholesome minds according to Abhidhamma there are 21 wholesome minds and 12 unwholesome minds then altogether there are 36 resultant minds and altogether there are 20 functional minds. Then how is the number? 21 and 12, mm, 20 and 12, 33, 33, 36, 69, 69, 20, 89. Abhidhamma teaches us 89 minds. These 89 minds comes under consciousness activity. If you don't know these things, this is called ignorance. <laughs> if you don't know what is consciousness and what are the things within the consciousness, so this is called ignorance. <laughs> 89 reasons why you should feel more and more depressed. Huh? 89 reasons as to why you should feel uh, depressed. No, there are, are very, no, there are very happy things under this 89. Under these 89 minds, because of our foolishness, we are unhappy. Under these 89, there are only two minds have unhappiness. This is a wonderful thing. We lament and sorrow and we are unhappy all the, many of the time. But under these 89 minds, there are only two minds has dormanas. So the samsara is not so miserable then. That's right. That's the thing. Not so miserable. <laughs> we, we have become samsara miserable because of our ignorance. Yes. Samsara, <laughs> yes, in that case. Only two minds have dormanas. Dormanas is, you know, the, how you translate dormanas? Sorrow, unhappiness. Sorrow, sadness, unhappiness. There are only two minds have sorrow, uh, sadness, and there is another one mind has painful sensation, painful bodily sensation. Only these three minds are the real suffering. Really, we can say suffering as these three minds. Rest of the mind, other 86 minds, are not inherently painful. We make our life painful because of our ignorance. There is no real ignorance. Real, uh, there is no real pain. Real pain is only these three minds. But the weight of those three minds is higher than the others. Or maybe Not, in mm -hmm. number, but in, in quantity, but in quality. No, actually, uh, because of our Ayoniso Manasikara, unwise thinking, these three multiply by many times. Okay. So, yes, these three multiply by many times and we create big pain, big sadness, big unhappiness. So we again and again think about these two unhappy things and make our life miserable. So when you say physical pain and the two are... Mental pain. 
So this is the way those spines named. One consciousness accompanied by displeasure associated with aversion unprompted. One consciousness accompanied by displeasure associated with aversion prompted. These are the only two minds which has uh, displeasure. So these two minds uh, we have multiplied by many times and we are always in this pleasure. <laughs> but really, naturally, uh, uh, only two minds. But in, as a percentage of our life, mental, our mental body, in our life, we experience maybe many percent times or many per big percentage uh, displeasure minds. But naturally, we have only two minds. And 86 minds are not displeasure minds. This one also not big problem. Mentally, uh, sorry, physical pain. Physical pain is not big problem. It, it, it's, it's available even, even, even within the Buddha and within the Arahants, this mind. This mind available in Buddha and Arahants also. Physical pain mind. Mental pain minds are available in uh, uh, everybody before non-return, before anagami level, everybody has uh, these uh, unpleasure minds. But it, it is very happy news among 89 minds, there are only two minds have uh, unpleasure or displeasure. Isn't it like the sea? Hmm? No, the hydrogen and oxygen, they are just two guys, but the sea is mostly like water. No? You can make it sea. You can make these two minds as an ocean, as sea. If you think again and again and again hmm. on the uh, unpleasant object, hmm. then you can multiply it. Hmm. Uh, yes, now when we look at the anger, Mm, or domanasa or unhappiness, there are two things should come together to make it uh, unhappy. Uh, these are um, patiga nimitta and ayonisho manasika. Patiga nimitta means uh, symbol or the sign or the perception which support to sadness. Patiga nimitta. And ayonisho manasika is unwise thinking about that symbol, that sign. So these two things, when come together, can create unhappiness, anger, sorrow, everything. So uh, these are the um, 89 minds count under uh, consciousness aggregate. So, it's good to write nicely. Uh, Tanya can write nicely after the class. So you remember? Uh, karmic consciousness divided into two, wholesome and unwholesome. They are uh, wholesome 21, unwholesome 28.
No, no, no. In excess concentration, it is extremely wholesome. <coughs> excess concentration means concentration very close to the jhana. There is no patiganimitta at all. What is patiganimitta? Patiganimitta means as perception about anger oh. or unhappiness. Aversion is Oh, aversion. Perception about aversion. And next one, this one also. Result. Certain minds are thirty six. Functional minds are twenty. This twenty can be divided again. Mm. These are two minds are available in all people, all beings, not people. Okay. Now, when we talking about consciousness under Abhidhamma, it is not limited to human being. It is about uh, let's say under consciousness there are 89 minds so the, this 89 is not limited to human it's, a, it's a, a, some of these minds available in brahmas and some others available in devas some others available in humans some others available in animals and some other minds available in hell beings ghosts and some minds available in Buddha, some minds available in Arahans, and some other minds available in Sotapannas. All those minds which is possible to exist in this universe is taken under consideration uh, uh, within these 89 minds. In the past and in the future and present, there are more minds, more than 89 minds. That is the nature of Abhidhamma. Abhidhamma cope everything. Everything and one thing. One and all. Considering one and all is the style of Abhidhamma. And there are some subtle uh, explanations. Now these 89 minds can can uh, further elaborate and make 121 minds also 89 minds so 121 minds so this is the consciousness aggregate now let's go to the uh, these things karmic consciousness wholesome and unwholesome now first let's go to unwholesome side. There are eight mind rooted to greed. Greed. How say greed? G R E A uh, greed. Greed. Eight mind rooted to greed. Two minds rooted to aversion. Two mind rooted to delusion. So these are the unwholesome minds. Un unsol unwholesome mind means unwholesome mind available in you as well as all. Other than these twelve minds, there are no unwholesome mind available in the universe. In the past or in the future or in present, all sort of unwholesomeness can be uh, summarized into these 12 minds. If one of these minds is not available, there, then there is no unwholesomeness in the world. So if you can eradicate just these 12 minds, you are completely free from unwholesomeness. <laughs> Only 12 minds. Only 12 minds represent unwholesomeness. 
all the greed available in our minds can be included into this eight. All the hatred arise in our minds can be uh, included into these two. All the delusion available in our mind can be included into these two. <coughs> so there are only 12 unwholesome minds and we have to practice to eradicate just 12 minds. Then we are free from all the unwholesomeness. So this is the way these things are explained. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every month, one year, we have to one, and then for the new year, and then another. But the problem is, these minds are eradicated by only by supramundane path knowledge. That's the problem. Now, <laughs> when they look at these eight greedy minds, if you become Sotapanna, four greedy minds will not arise again in you. But four greedy minds arise. And if you become non written anagami, these two aversion minds will not arise again. And if you become arahant, then only these two minds disappear. Ah, but out of these two, one mind disappear when you become sotapa. Wrong view. Wrong view. Uh, yes. Actually, it's wrong, not the wrong view. The, the minds are named as restlessness mind and doubt mind. Doubt mind uh, completely eradicate when you become Sotapa. So, that is the way we can overcome these minds. Up to that, I mean, before that, you can suppress these unwholesome minds. How to suppress these unwholesome minds? Suppress or chase away a little bit away. How we can uh, suppress these minds, unwholesome minds? Through, through concentration in, in the yes, actually for that we use these 10 things. In order to suppress uh, these 12 minds, we use these things, generosity, virtue, meditation, respect, helping others, transfer, transferring merits, rejoicing merits, teaching Dhamma, listening Dhamma and correcting view. So we use these 10 things to suppress these things. But in order to eradicate, you have to be either Sotapan or Sakadagami, Anagami or Arahant. <laughs> yes. Uh, now this is the way uh, Abhidhammata Sangha explained these minds. Mm. So, there are eight greedy minds. One consciousness accompanied by joy associated with wrong view, unprompted. So, although it is unwholesome, there is joy. Next one, one consciousness accompanied by joy associated with wrong view, prompted. One consciousness accompanied by joy disassociated from wrong view, unprompted. One consciousness associated by joy disassociated from wrong view, prompted. One consciousness associated by equanimity, associated with wrong view, unprompted. One consciousness accompanied by equanimity, associated with wrong view, prompted. One consciousness accompanied by equanimity, disassociated from wrong view, unprompted. One consciousness accompanied by equanimity, Disassociated from wrong view, prompted. These eight types of consciousness are accompanied by greed. So, these eight minds are accompanied by greed, greedy minds. What's the difference between prompted and unprompted? Prompted means uh, you do it uh, with 
the support of others or you yourself secondary uh, support you not at once unprompted means you do it at once without anybody's influence so th this is the different of prompted and unprompted in pali we call asankarika and sasankarika So these are the greedy minds. All the greedness or the greediness in this universe is within the realm of these eight, eight minds. All the greediness uh, available with, with us uh, described by these explanations. But uh, there are very subtle areas of these greedy minds as i said four of these greedy minds available even within non returners four greedy minds uh, disappear when one attains sotapanna they are the greedy minds uh, related to wrong view now there are greedy minds one consciousness associated by joy associated with wrong view unprompted this mind completely eradicate once you attain sotapan and the next one one consciousness accompanied by joy associated with wrong view prompted this one also completely eradicated one when one attain sotapan and uh, one consciousness accompanied by joy disassociated disassociated from wrong view unprompted this mind will exist or will arise until you attain arahant and one consciousness accompanied by joy disassociated from wrong view prompted this mind also can arise until one attain arahant and this mind one consciousness accompanied by equanimity associated with wrong view unprompted this mind also completely eradicated when one attains sotapanna and one consciousness accompanied by equanimity associated with wrong view prompted this one also eradicated when attaining sotapanna one consciousness accompanied by equanimity this associated from wrong view unprompted this mind exists until become arahant and one consciousness accompanied by equanimity this associated from wrong view prompted this mind also will exist until one become arahant so this is this is the way uh, it is explained uh, in abhidhamma guiding Uh, greed, greedy minds. So here um, you can find uh, associated with wrong view and disassociated, disassociated from wrong view. This is very important. What's the meaning of this? Associated, associated with wrong view means you do things with wrong view. you do wrong things with wrong view disassociated from wrong view means you do bad things but with right view how to understand this how how to do wrong things with right view <coughs> like knowing something that is bad is to do it that's right you know this is bad but you do this is the Uh, wrong, uh, disassociated from wrong, and you do. And also, if you have nice meditation experience, and you are kind of wanting to enjoy that experience. Uh, that yes, if if you don't see the danger of that pleasantness, mm -hmm. then there can be slight wrong view. If you take that pleasant experience as permanent, <coughs> then there can be wrong view. uh now as example uh let's say you like something uh, let's say this phone you like this phone and you steal it 
and uh, you think it's wrong so that is the moment or the mind disassociated <coughs> now you you know you you know it's wrong so that's the time disassociated with wrong and another occasion uh, another one take the phone steal the phone thinking that it is not wrong rich people can have any number of phones so it's not harm to take by me <coughs> so the, then it is the it is with wrong we so the second case is worse that's right that's that's right second case is worst mm. that's the benefit of being born as a buddhist <laughs> being born as a buddhist whatever we do we know it is wrong <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So, because we know it wrong, there is a, a there is a, a room, or the, there is a there is a chance to come out of it one day. Because you know it wrong. If you don't know it wrong, and if you don't consider it wrong, it's wrong. Then you never come out of it. You you think it's okay? It's correct. No problem. That means you continue it forever. That's the benefit of being born as a Buddhist. Okay. Today class is finished. Thank you very much. Kripal Jim, protect you. Thank you.